hey everyone welcome back to my channel i am piyush goel and today we are going to do an another hands-on which will be on sub process invocation before we jump in i want to give a shout out to all the amazing viewers your comment and supports have been incredible and it keeps me inspired to create the content that's valuable for you if you are new here don't forget to hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out our deep dives into the world of tipco and beyond and hey if you have got any questions as we go through this or there is a specific tipco topic you want me to cover in future videos drop a comment below i love hearing from you and your feedback shapes the content on this channel all right enough talking let's get into the nitty gritty of tipco business works grab your virtual notebook and let's dive right in let's switch back to the workbench and see the ways we can invoke a sub process so guys, this is our existing implementation, which we have done on our previous tutorial. So uh, we have this addition sub process, which is a direct sub process. And this is our main process or I, or I can say a starter process or a timer starter process. So it is a time based process. So for a direct sub process invocation, like if I drag and drop this addition to this calculation process, so you will notice it is it you know it is just directly getting added over here so i just have to pass the input for now i am going to pass 10 as an input and i am going to duplicate it three times so that you know my expectation will be 30 as an output so this is a direct sub process for direct sub process if you remember we have created the schema file and we have created the request and response for this addition operation and uh, and in the sub process start we have given the you know addition request in the start activity output editor and addition response as an input editor in the end and we have applied a sum function on the result section now we are going to create one more method over here uh, which will be a multiplication so i have right click on on my shared module processes and i am creating one more sub process but this time i am going to choose the interface mechanism as service and again your modifier will remain as public in this case and after that i am going to select the custom option in the visual option and i'm going to click on next so in the service selection menu it is it is going to ask me two options the first one is to create a new visual interface for service and the second one is use an existing visual interface for service so both can be you know po both possibilities are present so it's up to you which option you want to decide so for now i am going to create a new visual implementation and i am going to give a service name as calculation service and in the new visual section so it is showing us the folder like where this visual is going to be created i am going to keep it as default and this is a file name which is nothing but the similar to our service name so i think i have misspelled the service so yeah and this is our target namespace whatever namespace is going to be assigned to this visual that is i'm going to replace the last part with this calculation service and it's a pref and it is going to assign a prefix either you can leave it as is or you can you know give your own prefix let me give it as calcs as a prefix and in the operation name so this is the interface name which is again the same as this which is a calculation service operation name i am going to give it as a multiplication and in the input message i am going to select a schema from the schema folders which i have already created so i'm going to select the input in the input section i'm going to select the multiplication request and in the output section i'm going to click choose the multiplication response and i'm going to click on finish 
So now I'm going to implement the logic for that. I need a process variable and going to create one variable and give a name as product because I am doing a multiplication and I'm going to choose the variable type as decimal and I will assign the default value as one. then I am going to do a for loop over this or I can choose a iterate option and from iterate option I have to give the variable list section so I am going to iterate over the all the inputs I am getting from the you know request which will be you know assigned to the current element variable so what I am going to do, I am doing going to do a multiplication of the current product which I have with the current element which the you know this iterating loop is going to give me. So this will be the final you know you know the math right. So and in the output I am going to you know assign this product variable and I'm going to do the fixed type casting. So now yeah, our sub process is completed. Now I'm going to, you know, go, I will go back on this calculation, you know, our main process and I'm going to drag and drop this multiplication sub process. You will notice there is a reference got created for this multiplication and in the input, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pass the three tenths as an input to this multiplication so my expectation will be a thousand so now i have the first process first sub process invocation which is a direct sub process which is addition and my second sub process which is a multiplication sub process which is a serviced based process so i am going to you know go into the debug option and you know going to delete this configuration and going to create one new configuration so that you know the configuration will be updated then i'm going to click on debug option so the execution is completed so if i show you the main process which is our calculation process so in the addition input we are passing three tens and our output is 30 and in multiplication we are passing again three tens but our output is thousand which is our expectation so you will notice the difference between you know a direct process and a service process invocation there is a one more way in which you can invoke a process which is a dynamic process override so that we are going to again discuss on a different tutorial so Thank you guys. That is all for today.